Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another four-part harmony tutorial a video where we explore and learn how to improve our skills when writing four-part harmony. Today we are looking at the perfect cadence in a major key and we will be learning how to write it in root position in both closed and extended positions. So I strongly re recommend if you have not watched the previous video, our harmony tutorial number one, that you go and check that out. I'll link it in the description down below. And also it will appear as an info card right here now. Uh, go check that out. We cover some important rules which we will be implementing into our lessons going forward. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. All right, so what I've done for today's lesson is I've broken it up into four bars, bars one and two are in C major and bars three and four are in D major. Bars one and three will be written as closed position voicings and bars two and four as extended or open position voicings. The first thing that you need to know about the perfect cadence is that its figuring is five to one. It is known as a complete cadence resolving perfectly to the one. As we will remember from the previous video, in a major key, our figuring for five and for one are both written as uppercase Roman numerals. In this case, five being uppercase and one also being uppercase. In a minor key, it all changes, something we will deal with in a later video. Okay, so let's start by writing our first cadence in C major. We're going to be writing a closed position voicing in bar one here, going from five to one, a perfect cadence in root position. Let's start by looking at our bass notes. For the five triad, the five of C major, C, D, E, F, G. It is G, so we take the triad starting from G, G, B, D in the key of C major. And what I would suggest you do is you write your working down below that figure, G, B, D. Okay, let's do the same thing for the one triad. So one of C major is obviously C, so the triad would be C, E, G in the key of C major. Now that we have our working out done, what I always suggest is that you work from the bottom up unless you're given a soprano note, which we might do at the end of this video. So what we want to ideally start with is a bass note and then move from the from from bass to tenor to alto to soprano. So our bass note here for the five chord, because we're in root position, is going to be that G right over there. So of course, you have a couple of options available to you. You could start the G down here, or you could start the G right over there. In this case, because we're in closed position and the voicing might be quite close to that bass note over there, I'm going to bring it down to this G straight over here. And for the one chord, let's also place our bass note. I'm going to put a nice little C right in the middle of that stave because it's not going to be leaping too much. Another rule which we'll get to very soon. Okay, so we've got our bass note here in the five chord. Now let's get down our tenor, bearing in mind that we want to stay in closed position. So, we have a couple of options available to us here. We could go to a B, and then we could go to a D, and then finally to a G at the top. What that means is that we've got a nice close position voicing. There's no note in between the B and the D that is found in the triad, and there's no note in between the D and the G that is found in the triad. Of course, these options are always, well, they can be explored in depth. There's a lot of different options that you could use um, and still be within a closed position try, uh, voicing. But um, for now, we're going to keep it just like that. Over on the one chord, we've got our C. Now, bearing in mind that you're still remembering the rules from the previous video on doubling and range and spacing, We've got C here. Do we have any notes that are in common between the two voices? Yes, we do. We've got a G. They both share the G. So ideally, for good voice leading, another rule that we'll cover more in depth, 
we want to try and keep that voice part staying constant. So there's a G in the bass, but since we already have our bass notes, we can see that there's now a G in the soprano and the five chord. So ideally we want to try and keep that note constant. So just bear that in mind when building your chords. The other thing to notice is that certain voices can move up by step or down by step. So what does that mean? Well, in the five chord, we've got a B in the tenor part, and that could simply move up by step to a C. In the alto part, we've got a D, and that could simply move down by step to a C. So these are certain practices that one should always bear in mind to improve one's harmonic voice leading. So in this case, we've got a G to a B over here, so we can do an octave between the bass and the tenor here. So we've got our two Cs, they are doubled. Now all we need to do, that D could move up by step to the E, and we can keep the G constant. Now we've got a perfect cadence in closed position that is voiced correctly um, and is yeah well just gonna sound good so let's have a listen to it in the time signature of three four obviously nice and quick but it's got a good sound you can hear how the five resolves perfectly to the one so let's move over to an extended position voicing again get down your working in this case, we're still in C major, so G, B, D. We'll move that over there. And for the one chord, C, E, G. Because we're still in root position, we stay starting on the G. In this case, let's start the G up there. Now, there are a couple of options that we could approach doing a voicing like this. What I would suggest maybe doing is going G to a D in this case. And then we go to a B and then a G at the top. So we've doubled that. This is open because between that D and that B, we could find a G from the triad. And between that B and that G at the top, we can find the D from the triad. Therefore, it is an open position. And now our one chord over here, we need to voice this place our bass note down first. There it is, C. Again, trying to pay attention to correct harmonic voice leading. We want to see if we can't keep some notes constant and others moving simply up by step. In this case, the G works well at the top again. So let us move the C over there. And then, well, actually, suppose we could have it as an E rather. And then we, so we've got a C, we've got an E. Now we just need one more C and a G. We write the C up here and a G at the top. And what you've got now is a perfect cadence in extended position in the key of C major, five to one. Let's have a listen to that now. In fact, what I'll do is I'll play the closed position voicing first and then the extended position after so you can hear the difference. Yeah, so it's slightly more open. There's a bit more explore exploration in range. Um, so that works out quite nicely. As a bonus example, if we look at bars three and four, you'll notice in D major that we've been given the soprano voice part. This is something that can be found within an exam or a test paper. So when you get the soprano note, in some cases, they probably won't even give you the figuring and they'll say that you need to work out what the cadence is. In this case, I'm giving you the figuring five to one. We're working with perfect cadences as a closed position voicing in this bar, in bar three, and an extended position voicing in bar four. So if we look at this first one, we've been given the soprano note E to F sharp. Again, we're dealing with D major. 
So our working out for the five chord is A, C sharp, E, and for the one chord is D, F sharp, and A. So what you must do is you must go and look, we've been given an E, so you can already go and cross out that E. We have it, we don't need to write it again at this stage. And in the one chord, we've been given the F sharp, the third, which you must never double in a major key. And in this case, you can go and cross that out. We don't need to write that down again. So you do what we've been doing before. You go and put down your bass notes. In this case, it's a closed position voicing. So what I'm going to do is start with a low A. And I'm going to build all the way up. So I'm probably going to go and double my A again over here. And then go and simply plug in the C sharp in the alto part. Don't forget that soprano. Okay, now we're leading up to that F sharp. Our soprano voice part, the E, is simply moving up by step to an F sharp, which is great. Moving up by a tone. So for the one triad now, we just need to place down our bass note. In root position, that is D. We've got the F sharp. So ideally, we want to double the D again and keep the A constant. So the A will go there. So the tenor part is staying nice and constant. And then the C sharp in the alto part is now moving up to a D. And there we have a 5-1 progression or cadence in closed position and root position in D major, uh, where we were given the soprano note. So let's move on to bar four. The final example for this lesson, we've been given an A in the soprano in the five chord to another A in the one chord, extended. Again, we just run our simple rule of moving up, up the voice parts and building like that. So I'll use the A at the bottom again. We now have two A's on the sheet. So we need to think about our extended position here and make sure that we don't run into any trouble. I'm going to place down an E there. And then probably the C sharp in the alto part. Moving on to the one chord, getting our bass note down, the D. Now, because the D is already quite close to that alto uh, part from the previous, sorry, that tenor part from the previous chord, we can try and keep things slightly closer together without overlapping. We've got the D in the bass, so let's put down our F sharp. We have an A in the soprano, which means that all we need to do now is put in the D in the alto part. And there we have a perfect cadence in D major, in the extended position where we were given the soprano notes. Let's have a listen to that quick. Let me just move this over, there we go. And there you can hear a perfect cadence in D major, in closed position and in, and in extended position where we were given the soprano note already. Thank you for watching this video. It's been an honor for me to present this to you guys. Thank you for some of the comments that you have left down below. Um, they really do uh, I really do appreciate them and it also helps me improve the video tutorials for the future. So if you do have any more comments, please don't be shy and let me know. Um, you can catch me over on Twitch every Tuesdays and Thursdays from about 7 p.m. South African Standard Time. Feel free to pop in there, ask me any questions, music related or anything else for that matter. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.